didn't get this eulogy written until last, last night because I just couldn't get around to it and couldn't start, but didn't want to make it real. But, um, you know, in our family, we like to make it a point. We always end our phone calls with saying, I love you. I don't know when the tradition started, but that's the last, in case something happens, I think it was after we passed away. Um, that's the last thing we say on the phone, so that the last words we have with each other are, are good words. And, uh, you know, my dad and I had our moments, two cantankerous old beds and poor mom in the middle, and then we fought a lot, but our last words were good words and kind words and a hug. So, um, he said he was, he told me last Monday, he said, I'm tired. I was tired. fired. Um, my husband headed out and Now I won't be able to call and ask him for advice about make car maintenance or finances or him always on that Apple phone with, you know, <laughs> sending me little text messages of advice, fatherly advice, or something he thought I should know that <laughs> maybe I would get irritated and say, oh, I already know that, Dad, but <laughs> I didn't miss that. Um, when I was a kid, God loved to go out of the boat. And we have lots of good memories of that. He let me sit in his lap and steer the boat. We don't have the red markers and the green markers. And I still love boating. Um, before I could drive, boy, <laughs> by the book brown, I had to learn about changing a tire and changing the oil filter because he didn't want his daughter to be stranded by the side of the road at the mercy of <laughs> crazies. <laughs> um, and boy, did that impress some fellas <laughs> going out dating. He worried a lot about our family, and, and we worked hard despite the challenges uh, presented to him. Um, I'm proud that he didn't sit on his butt and say, I'm sorry, but he didn't say, you know, poor me, I don't have a leg. He didn't sit on his butt and feel sorry for himself. He went to work, and like Mom said, he took care of us and worked until the doctor said he needed to <laughs> take a break. When I was going through a tough situation, I could look at this example and tell myself that things could always be worse. You know, I was going through my divorce in 2005 and I was pretty darn depressed. You know, he finally opened up and told me how he lost his leg in Vietnam because growing up, that was just something we didn't talk about. It was just something you didn't ask about, you know. And so after hearing him tell me about how he was laying there and the medic came over and he refused the morphine and he crawled over to the radio man to call for dust off. and the comm had gotten damaged during the explosion, so he got no reply, and he said that was the 30th minute of his life until the boom, boom, until that came, <laughs> and uh, got him and his guys out of there. Um, I, I realized that my divorce was really not that much of a challenge, and I could be as tough as he was, and I, I got out of the Marine Corps to take care of my two wonderful sons here, and, and uh, be a military spouse to their father who's in the Marines, but um, I uh, went back to the Army, and of course, Grandma Weeze thought I was nuts at 35 going to the Army, but I had a plan. My dad was a Mustang, and maybe I want to be a Mustang too, <laughs> and uh, finished the combat medic school at age 36 with honors, and uh, I remember telling people about how a medic saved my dad's life in Vietnam, and uh, it, uh, I just got through that training, and it went easy, had an injury, came back, and did it with my shoulder rotator cuff torn and um, went through the LPN school and went to Iraq and finally got to RN school. And uh, dad wasn't able to come to the commissioning ceremony in San Antonio due to his health, but we set up a laptop with the video so he could watch and I gave him my first salute. And uh, finally, finally, he was tough, but dad was proud and he finally told me so. Yeah, it took you long enough, dad. <laughs> Um, he was also very proud, and still is proud, of his grandson Thomas, who's out now a combat medic, and his grandson Frank, who recently just finished school, and uh, they're both actually PCSing, which is why their uniforms were in transit, their dress uniforms, and uh, Frank learned how to drive some really big vehicles. <laughs> so he said, watch out on the road, here comes Frank, just a couple weeks ago. But uh, I wish we could have gotten a photo of all of us in our uniform. Um, that's what something he said he wanted to do, but he understands. Um, and I know he's not tired anymore. 
and he's not in pain anymore, and he's not tired like he told me two weeks ago. And uh, he has both legs now, and he's walking around all in heaven. Breaking decorum for just a moment, as I inherited the gift of gab as well. And this notes here will help me stay focused and on point for this. Many who knew him would say that he could talk to fill the room, because he had so much knowledge and wisdom to impart. Some of my fondest memories were staying up late with him, sometimes even till sunrise as he taught me about the world, life, and how to make the most of my time for myself and for others. To L.T. Brown, selfless service was never a question. <clears throat> but for the L.T., service did not end when the uniform was hung up. He continued to work to serve the veteran community as long as he could professionally but also on a personal level as he mentored veterans into their new lives and helped them meet their individual needs after they too came home. He leaves behind a fine example and some large shoes to fill. But it is my hope and belief that the sense of camaraderie that he built within his family and the veterans he called brothers will see us through the days to come. that grandpa would sit and talk all day. <laughs> all day. <laughs> As a young man, I didn't always pay attention. I just like spending time with my grandpa. But I learned so much from him. And growing up, I saw this man with one leg, not always even in a wheelchair, accomplish so much with his hands, his mind, his heart. I learned how to use a chainsaw from this man, Jesus. <laughs> but he was always active, always doing something, always smiling, always talking. And I remember being so young and having so many people, so many strangers come up to him and talk, and just the respect and reverence they showed this man. I found that inspiring because in his mind, no matter what your station, no matter what your status, your people will respect you and honor you because you're right there with them, working, getting your hands dirty, and getting things done right there next to them. And that was one of my biggest inspirations for going to the No matter where I go, no matter what rank or status, I'm always there working right next to my guys and getting things done. And that's the most important thing I think he taught me is that no matter what you think gets in your way, what obstacles you got, this man overcame all of that and more. And he just kept inspiring, kept learning, kept helping others to become more than what they thought they could be. He in my own personal opinion, was the personification of what a veteran should be. Knowledgeable, honorable, always willing to inspire the next generation to come. That is the most important thing about a veteran, that they inspire the next generation to take up the mantle that so few can take up. 
He's earned his rest. And a life well lived should not be one ended with mourning, but with good will and good company. <sighs> Yeah.